is this visible to everyone yes sir okay so let's start the what we have proven is oh this is the correlation what we proved yesterday what does it say it says that if we have a non zero functional then for each non zero scalar uh this set s which is defined by all those x such that f of is alpha this is nothing but the inverse image of alpha under f this is closed hyperplane so we have proven this so let's go ahead and to our next theorem so in this theorem so yesterday what we have proven we have proven that first recall yesterday's theorem what does it say okay so yesterday's theorem says says that f inverse of alpha where alpha is non zero and f is non zero and f belongs to x then okay so this is a closed hyperplane did we prove this we proved that s is nothing but the null space plus something means we just translate the null space to some x not where this x not it says that f of x not equal to alpha correct audible to everyone hello yes sir yes sir सुनाई दे रहा है ना आवाज बीच बीच में बता दिया करो मुझे ओके सो 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 लेट्स सी इट ग्राफिकली मींस ओके सो वी से वी आर इन आर टू इन आर टू एंड वी हैव अ लीनियर फंक्शनल करेक्ट सो how does this s look like it will look like a hyperplane like this it's an affine hyperplane it is called an affine hyperplane okay when it passes through the origin we call it a linear hyperplane or a hyperplane okay now our next theorem gives a, the distance uh, of this hyperplane from the origin from the origin means distance so okay so this is a 90 degree angle okay so if it is not then please feel that it is 90 degrees you all know this hmm so so the distance of a line in r2 from the origin is the shortest distance is nothing but uh, the distance of this line segment which is which makes a 90 degree angle correct So this fact. Hello. Yes. Please participate in the conversation. Okay. 
otherwise uh, it will be very difficult for me to uh, understand that you are getting it or not okay so let's state our theorem what does it say theorem says that if we have a non zero functional so here we are taking this linear functional from x dash x dash is set of bounded linear functional remember this okay where x is a non linear space and let all to the x in x so that fx equal to 1 so this is nothing but so mf is nothing but inverse image of the scalar one then we know we know that mf is then mf is a closed a fine hyperplane furthermore distance of mf from 0 is 1 by norm of f now it depends which norm are you taking uh in in norm x okay so norm of x depends on on norm of x also you know this okay mm, whether it is okay okay let let's do this so what is the proof we have we are given that f is a non zero bounded linear functional f is bounded linear functional so this is nothing x prime is all bounded set of all bounded linear functional from x to k okay so so by definition what do we know we know that mod of fx is less than equal to c norm of c. x ah, no so we we call that norm of f correct is it okay yes sir this, okay this is true now so how do you define the uh, how do you define okay so you have a set a a is a set okay let me do the question first so we are in a metric space x we have a set a okay this is a we have a point say x not then how do you define distance of a from x not how do you define this mod of x not or a ka koi point jo bhi point hai wo le lenge aise karte hain kya ye ka koi ye ka koi bhi point lenge to wo to bahut sare matlab ye point lenge to alag distance aayega ye point lenge to alag distance aayega ye lenge alag distance aayega minimum so, distance le lenge na ha usko minimum ha kya lenge infimum infimum usko infimum zyada behtar hai minimum ठीक है इनफिनिटी सर मिनिमम बहुत बार एग्जिस्ट नहीं करता करेक्ट हां सर बट इनफिनिटी एग्जिस्ट करेगा 
सो वट वी डू वी टेक इनपीम क्या लिखेंगे बोलो इनपीम ऑफ बोलिए डिस्टेंस बिटवीन एक्स नॉट एंड वाई वेर वाई रन ओवर ए करेक्ट एनी डाउट ओके ये ठीक नहीं है ठीक है सर ठीक है ना ओके अब हम अपने केस में आते हैं हमारे पास एम एफ था एम एफ कैसा दिख रहा है सो सो हियर वी आर इन आर टू से से वी आर इन आर टू से वी आर इन आर टू सो वी आर इन ए वेक्टर स्पेस से वी कैन डिपिक दिस एक्स दिस इज ओवर एक्स ओके नाउ हियर इज ओवर एम एफ करेक्ट so what do you do you take distance of point from mf so distance of points of mf from zero so take this point this is say x so what is the distance between zero and x we'll draw kare na line so 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 distance of this line segment will be distance of x from 0 correct correct yes sir and you know x is a you know this capital x is a non linear space how do you define distance between two point so what would be dx 0 आप लोगों ने एक क्वेश्चन मैंने दिया था कि हर एक ऑफ एक्स हो जाएगा नॉर्म जो नॉर्म जो है नॉर्म डिस्टेंस इंड्यूस करता है सो नॉर्म की मतलब जीरो नॉर्म नॉर्म एक्स माइनस जीरो व्हिच इज नथिंग बट नॉर्म एक्स करेक्ट यस सर इज इट ओके एनीट्री पॉइंट फ्रॉम एक्स and uh, we 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 will see its distance from zero then we take infimum over all such distance of all such distances correct so take an arbitrary point x in mf so since x belong to mf by definition of mf fx is 1 then f of x equal to One. One. This implies mod of f x. This is one. Mod of one is one. Correct. Mm. And by definition of bounded linear functional, we get this thing. And this is true for all x in M F. Correct. So from here, this implies. So since Hello. f is non-zero, norm f is non-zero, norm f is positive, correct? Means yes, writing about since then norm f is non-zero. It is strictly positive. So this means one by norm f is less than equal to norm of x. and this is also true for all x in m okay correct 
So what is what would be T zero MF by definition? So so you this definition. Use this definition. So, what would be D zero MF? This is nothing but minimum of D zero comma X, where X belongs to MF. Correct. So, but you know you have uh, correctly. Yes, but is D no D zero X? Okay, I'm writing what is this? This is actually norm of X. Okay. Yes, sir. And you know norm of X. So so this is infimum. So so if so you. You this part and take infimum over all x. If you take infimum both sides over x, what you get? You will get one by norm f is less than equal to infimum of norm of x. X belongs to M F. So this is nothing but d zero. Mf. So this means you are saying one upon norm f is less than equal to this. Correct. So, but but you wanted to prove that d zero mf is equal to. Implies, but you will now prove. You will now prove that d zero. Now we claim that d zero mf. Is less than equal to one by norm f. Okay. Okay. So here we use the definition of norm of f. What is the definition of norm of f? Norm of f is. Supremum. How do we define? Supremum. Uh, mod of. Mod of f x by norm x. Correct. X in x. x equal to zero. Uh, x is non zero. What? Ha ha. X is non zero. Thank you. X is non zero. Non zero. Okay. Now. Now. Do one thing. Take a k greater than zero. So for each, for each k greater than one, for each k greater than one, when I when I multiply k by norm of f, it will be greater than norm of f. Correct? Yes, sir. Any doubt here? No sir. No sir. So this means, this means, what you get, uh, <clears throat> okay, okay, this implies norm of f is greater than norm of f by k. Okay, so far it's good. So since since norm of f is supremum of a quantity, supremum of these quantities, okay, and you are saying that norm of f by k is less than norm of f, strictly less than f. This means by the definition of supremum, there exists some y which is non-zero. In X, such that, such that, what would have, what would happen? Norm of f by k is less than mod of f y 
by norm y any doubt here we are just using the definition of supremum by using the definition of supremum understand this this step sir norm f ki jagah bas humne definition use kar liya hai ha norm f kya hota hai norm f kya hai norm f hai supremum upon norm x of, of something of this thing okay where x in the x and x is non zero ab aap kya kar rahe ho agar aap isse chhota koi number lete hain norm x se chhota koi bhi number lenge strictly स्मॉल तो हमें एक ऐसा वाई जरूर मिलेगा एक्स में जो कि एक्स वाई नॉन जीरो होगा सच दैट ये जो क्वांटिटी है नॉम एफ वाई बाय नॉम वाई ये क्वांटिटी किसके बीच में रहेगी नॉम एफ और नॉम उस जो भी छोटा हम ले रहे हैं तो यहाँ पर हमने छोटा ये वाला पार्ट लिया था करेक्ट ये आया कहाँ से दिस कम्स फ्रॉम डेफिनेशन ऑफ सुप्रीम ओके एनी डाउट हेलो यस सर कोई डाउट है तो बोल पूछिए नो सर okay so 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 far this is okay so let me start it hmm so uh so where would be okay so i was here so so my y was non zero so this y was non zero so this implies f of y is non zero correct yes sir so this implies y by f y belong to mf how because by definition of mf so y is non zero mf One. is all those points of x such that fx equal to 1 mm. so if you use the definition f of y by fy you know fy is a scalar it will come out into fy because because of this y by fy belongs uh. to correct yes sir okay so what are we getting from here so since y by fy belongs to mf so this implies norm of y by fy this is this will be greater than or equal to d0 mf why why so because D zero M F is infimum. It's called mm -hmm. infimum, correct? Yes, sir. D zero M F was infimum of D zero X. So this here, when we replace X by Y by F Y, so it it would be either equal or it be greater than D zero M F, correct? And you know, you know what you know from this. From here, what do you know? Now you double star. So now use this. Okay. So now what you get is uh, hmm. So from double star. from double star what you get you get y 
by mod x y is less than uh, k by normal correct yes sir so you can write double star like this any doubt no sir so far it is okay yes sir and see here this here y by norm of this is nothing but 1 upon mod f y oh what that mod f y norm y Uh, this comes from homogeneity homogeneity property of norm norm of alpha x is alpha. mod alpha norm x okay correct is it okay koi dikkat hai aapko isme yes no sir kya dikkat hai नहीं सर ठीक है नहीं दिक्कत है लेकिन यहाँ पर आपने क्या देखा था ये जो ये जो क्वांटिटी है ये किससे ये किससे बड़ी थी डी जीरो एम एफ से ग्रेटर देन डी जीरो एम एफ करेक्ट सर बोलिए कोई दिक्कत है यहाँ पर नो सर नहीं है ना सो so what you get you get d0 m x is less than k by norm f and this is true for all k greater than 1 hmm correct yes. now taking so letting k approaches to 1 so this is true for all k greater than 1 Now take k approaches to one. So what you get? You get zero m f is less than equal to one by norm of f. Okay. But here in 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 this place, you have shown that one by norm f is less than equal to zero m f. So one by f is less than equal to d zero m f. You have already shown this, and using these two, you get d zero m f is one by norm f. Correct? Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So now there is a question. Uh, Question is easy. So what does it say? It says that we are in R three, and we have f x equal to x one plus x two plus x three. Clearly, this is a non-zero linear functional. Here, x one, x two, x three. This will have to R three. so it says that find the distance of the hyperplane so so mf is x in r3 such that fx equal to 1 correct mm -hmm. and find the distance of d0 mf from uh, 0 Zero m f. So find distance of m f from zero. So you know by definition it would be one by f norm f. Okay. So find what is norm of f. Correct. Yes. You 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 can do this easily. Mm. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So here uh, use. Two norm in R three. Okay, what is two norm in R three? What is two norm in R three? 
So use R3 with this norm. This is called usual norm or natural norm. So, so how do you define? If you have x equal to x1, x2, x3 in R3, so how do you define norm of x2? Summation of x, no, mod of x1 plus x2 plus x3. x is square. You go one, one, one by two. Three. One, two, three. Four, one and by two. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know that if there are two points in R3, y1, y2, y3, so you read the first one in R3, बहुत पहले 11 12th क्लास में इनके बीच की डिस्टेंस कैसे निकालते थे y1 y2 का स्क्वायर प्लस ऐसे ही तीनों का करेंगे अंडर रूट में y1 स्क्वायर प्लस x2 y2 स्क्वायर यही था यस सर यस सर स्क्वायर होल अंडर रूट तो ये नाम जो ये टू नाम है यही डिस्टेंस करेगी ठीक है यूज दिस नाम ओके और आपको एक क्वासी सॉर्ट इन इक्विलिटी क्वासी सॉर्ट सी सॉर्ट इन इक्विलिटी का यूज करना होगा तो आप देखिए कैसे करना है ये हम थोड़ा आगे बढ़ते हैं ठीक है ओके सो सो फार वी हैव स्टडी टू काइंड ऑफ Dual spaces. कौन कौन से? Number one was x star, which was algebraic dual space. So algebraic dual space क्या था? So this one was algebraic dual space. So how did you define this? How did you define x star? Set, set, set of all linear functionals on a vector space x. On a vector space x. And you also studied x dash, which is, which is set of all bounded linear functionals over a non-linear mm -hmm. space. On a non-linear space, correct? Yes, sir. सो सो कौन किसका सबसेट होगा ऐसा हम बोल सकते हैं कुछ दोनों लीनियर फंक्शनल हैं ठीक है दोनों के एलिमेंट लीनियर फंक्शनल हैं तो एक को एक्स स्टार और एक्स डैश में कोई रिलेशन होगा कौन सा स्पेस बड़ा होगा एक्स स्टार एक्स स्टार बड़ा होगा क्योंकि यहाँ पर सारे लीनियर फंक्शन हैं और एक्स डेस और एक्स डेस में कौन से फंक्शनल्स हैं विच इज कॉल्ड ड्यूअल क्लियरली एक्स स्टार इज एक्स डेस करेक्ट नाउ इफ यू रिमेम्बर एक मैंने एक क्वेश्चन दिया था आप लोगों को टेस्ट में जिसको किसी ने नहीं किया और वो टेस्ट वो वो क्वेश्चन सभी ने गलत किया है सभी ने अभी तक मैं केवल छह लोगों की कॉपी और चेक करनी है तो मुझे नहीं मालूम उनमें किसी का मिलेगा नहीं मिलेगा तो क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्थ उसके दो पार्ट है दोनों में से दोनों एक पार्ट को तो किसने किया ही नहीं दूसरा पार्ट सब ने उल्टा सीधा कुछ कुछ लिख दिया है जो 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 पहला पार्ट था वो क्या था अगर किसी को याद है तो बोल सकते हैं वहाँ पर क्या क्या मार गया था continuously differentiable function वाला जो था c zero one continuously differentiable तो मैंने दिया ही नहीं था c zero one वाला तो c zero equivalent to equivalent form वाला sir I think कौन सा वाला equivalent form एक नॉर्म के रिस्पेक्ट में नॉर्म्स हैं दूसरे में नहीं हैं। सर बोला था जी वन एग्जांपल। सर बाउंडेड लीनियर ऑपरेटर बिटवीन टू साइनाइट डाइमेंशनल स्पेस। हाँ एक अनबाउंडेड लीनियर ऑपरेटर मांगा गया था जिसको किसी ने नहीं किया अब तक अभी तक डिप्टी को भी चेक करना है। फिफ्थ क्वेश्चन 
fifth question में जाने give an example with with a justification of an unbounded linear operator between two finite dimensional norm linear spaces ये था क्वेश्चन हाँ ऐसा था कि कोई एक ऐसा लिनियर स्पेस जो कि एक में बाउंडेड हो एक में अनबाउंडेड हो और हमें दिखा नहीं ऐसा नहीं था ऐसा नहीं था लिखा है बिटवीन टू फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल वेक्टर स्पेस फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल नॉन लिनियर स्पेस एक्स और वाई दोनों फाइनाइट डायमेंशन ठीक है कुछ बोल रहे हैं आप लोग तो तो क्वेश्चन तो मुझे ये याद आ रहा है तो ये था कि कोई ऐसा नॉम लिनियर स्पेस जो बाउंडेड हो एक में और दूसरे में अनबाउंडेड हो फिर हमें दिखाना था कि दोनों के इक्वेलेंट नहीं है दोनों डिफरेंट नॉम में और करके था ना तुम लोग दूसरे वाले किए हो गए और करके था और भी सही हो सकता है तो वो भी आप लोगों ने गलत किया था ठीक है कोई बात नहीं कभी इसके बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे तो मैंने एक क्वेश्चन लिया था जिसको किसी ने अटेम्प्ट नहीं किया Uh, और वो बहुत इजी क्वेश्चन था पता नहीं क्यों अटेंड नहीं किया तो वो क्वेश्चन क्या था कि एक हमें अन, एक्स और वाई दोनों फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल नॉम लीनियर स्पेस है एफ एक एक लीनियर ऑपरेटर है हमको एक एग्जांपल देना था कि ऐसा एफ जो अनबाउंडेड हो ठीक है लेकिन ऐसे कोई एफ एग्जिस्ट नहीं करेगा क्योंकि इन सो एवरी लीनियर ऑपरेटर बिटवीन टू फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल नॉम लीनियर स्पेसेस इज बाउंडेड सो फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल लीनियर ऑपरेटर के बीच में कोई भी आप सॉरी फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल नॉम लीनियर स्पेसेस के बीच में कोई भी लीनियर ऑपरेटर बाउंडेड होगा क्या सो दिस वाज द जस्टिफिकेशन आंसर वाज देयर डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट एनी अनबाउंडेड लीनियर ऑपरेटर बिटवीन टू फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल वेक्टर नॉम लीनियर स्पेस ओके सो व्हाई आर व्हाई एम आई पॉइंटिंग दिस आउट हियर बिकॉज ऑफ दिस फैक्ट इफ वी टेक एक्स ए फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल फाइनाइट dimensional norm linear space and you know k is you know this is always finite because dimension of k is 1 k is a vector space okay over k dimension is 1 so this is finite dimensional clearly k is finite dimensional. so we have two finite dimensional vector space non linear spaces x and k if we take any linear functional then it will be bounded then f bounded if this is linear functional so so what we have just proven so ye humne dekh chuke hum ye cheez jante na ye to humne pehle padha hua hai bounded ye bounded linear operator mein koi bhi do finite dimensional uh, non linear space ke beech mein koi bhi linear operator bounded hoga ye theorem aapne padh liye hello yes sir ye padhiye na to hum usko use karenge aur तो so, अभी अभी हमने क्या प्रूव कर दिया हमने प्रूव करा कि फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल के केस में एक्स स्टार और एक्स डैश दोनों बराबर हो जाएंगे ठीक है कोई दिक्कत इसमें नो सर If x is a finite dimensional norm linear space, then x star equal to x dash. Correct. Second thing, जो आपने कल देखा था, you you have seen that dimension of x star equal to dimension of x. If x is finite dimensional. Okay. And 
so this means dimension of x dash equal to dimension of x so what we have just proven is this theorem what is the theorem it says that let x be a finite dimensional norm linear space over uh, the cube k then x dash equal to x star and dimension of x dash equal to dimension of x ye wala part humne kal dekha tha yaad hai aapko actually humne dekha tha dimension of x star equal to dimension of x agar aapko yaad ho sahi se okay so so far it's okay so let's move ahead and let's recall two things recall you already know these notions so number 1 is isomorphism so you know what is the meaning of isomorphism in case of vector spaces so if we have two vector spaces over a same field so x and y these are vector spaces over k over k so x and y are called isomorphic if there exists a linear transformation or linear operator from x to y linear operator or transformation both are same thing and this is also bijective if t is a bijective linear operator if t is a bijective linear operator then called an isomorphism and x and y are called isomorphic vector spaces correct okay so in case of metric spaces so when we are in metric spaces we have similar thing that is called isometry what isometry so what is isometry isometry is also a mapping which preserves the distances okay you all know this i'm just recalling that whatever you know so here we have two uh, two metric spaces so we take two metric spaces x x is x comma d1 or say x dx y is y comma dy okay these are metric spaces both are metric they exist a function from x to y okay very good so so a function f from x to y that if distance from x to y isometry it has preserved the distance a preserved distances what does this mean that distance between x and y where x belongs to x and y belongs to y ah, is equal is. to f of x uh, distance between f of x and f of y for all x, x belongs to x okay, okay. 
so that you write this for is x1 comma x2 x1 comma x2 in x d of dy of f of x1 comma f of x2 it's same as so why we are taking dy here because this fx fx1 and fx2 are now points of mm -hmm. y right yes sir correct so this is nothing but dx dx of x1 x2 okay and this is for all points. so if we have this thing we call x and y over isometric Okay, now let's see some examples of dual spaces. So first one, first easy example. Some examples. So, so, so we start from Rn. So the dual space. So you know, when, when I say dual space, this means I am interested in bounded linear function, okay? The dual space of Rn, Rn with, so, so you know there are many norms in Rn, and, and I am taking this two norm. I so, Metrically isomorphic to R n with same this two norm. So do, so in other words, we say dual space of R n is R n. Roughly speaking, we say that dual space of R n is R n. But here, what I Said this is isometrically isomorphic. Okay. Okay. Let's observe something. So observe that the dimension of R n is n, which is finite. So R n is a finite dimensional norm linear space. So what do you know about? Finite dimensional norm linear spaces, you know that x equal to x dash rn dash equal to rn star. Correct? Yes, sir. This is because because rn is finite dimensional. Okay? Any doubt? So far it's okay. So Rn is a finite dimensional vector space, which is in fact a normal space. So therefore it is a vector space. So it has a basis. So take a natural, so the natural basis or usual basis, consider basis. Usual basis E1 Pn. So where you know E1 is 1000, E2 is 0, 1, 0, 0, that vector, and En is the vector 0, 0, 0, 1. Correct? Uh, R. Yes, so we have a basis. So you know that any element of Rn can be written as a linear combination of these mm -hmm. Ei. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we in Rn can be represented can be represented as x equal to summation 1 to n alpha i e i where x equal to so if if x equal to alpha 1 to alpha okay you know this 
So if x is alpha 1 to alpha n, x can be written this way. Now, take any functional f. You know, uh, bounded linear functional and linear functional both are same in, in, in this case. So take any. So so write like this for any f in x dash or x star. So here x is R n. R n star. For any f and for every x in R n. Until you saw this, I am again writing it. What we have, we have f of x is so. So we know x is written as i equal to one to n n pi e i. So from the definition of f, which is nothing but i equal to one to n alpha i f of e i. Correct. Hmm. So, so you may write it as i equal to one to n alpha i gamma i, where gamma i is f of e. Okay. So far, so good. Now use mod of f x. So what is mod of f x? It would be mod of i equal to 1 to n alpha i gamma i and you know how will we solve this kind of thing using Cauchy Schwarz inequality use Cauchy Schwarz inequality Schwarz inequality here so what you get from here it is uh, so so so, so first here we only use this part is easy. Here we use only triangle inequality. This this comes this is triangle inequality. Okay, now use Cauchy Schwarz. So here use Cauchy Schwarz. So this is less than equal to summation i equal to one to n. Half correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So since uh, since these alpha i gamma i these are real numbers, and you know alpha i square is positive, so you may write you may omit this modulus. There is no harm in omitting mm -hmm. this. Correct? Any doubt? Yes, so, so, so what was, so x was alpha 1 to alpha n. So how did you define norm x2? Summation 1 to i1 to n. i1 to n. I one to n. No, no, okay. Mod of alpha i alpha square. I square, square. So alpha, uh, and uh, whole one by two. two. Or norm so hata, part, mod hata this, part, this part is norm x. Hmm. Correct? Yes, and second part is summation i equal to 1 to n gamma i square half. So, ये जो था ये होता है नॉम ऑफ गामा वन गामा टू गामा एन करेक्ट यस एनी डाउट है सही है ना नाउ टेक इनफिमम no, the supremum both side. So because we 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 want something called norm of f, 
so you all know what is that something norm f so take supremum over uh, all x with norm 1 so this means so when you take um, supremum over all x in x with norm x equal to 1 this part is this is norm x. this is norm x correct and we are taking supremum both sides take supremum this side also so you will get this is less than equal to norm of gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma n correct Then, uh, huh? yes, yes, sir, so, and and what is gamma one? Gamma one was f of e one, gamma two was f of e two, gamma n will be f of e n. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Is, okay. No, sir. So, so now you know norm of f this is equal to supremum of mod of fx by norm x x in x and x is non-zero okay yes sir so f belongs to r and star okay so f is not zero uh, so f of e1 Uh, okay, it could be non zero, but yeah, some of them, some of FEI is non zero, so so gamma i non zero for some i. If, if we, we take this, if f is zero, then there is nothing to prove. If, if f is non zero, then we know gamma i is non zero for some, some i. Okay, now choose x like this. X is gamma 1 to gamma n, gamma 1 to gamma n. Here, some of some gamma i is non zero. Okay, then mod of fx naught by norm x naught to this is less than equal to norm of f because norm f is supremum over all this. Correct? Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. But you know what is this? This is nothing but so uh, this is nothing less than uh, this is equal to I what is mod f of so 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 what you get is uh, let me write uh, let me see here okay mm, so yeah for you can get some reason uh, gamma i square uh, gamma gamma i square or niche aega summation gamma i square uh, square root okay so this implies this is summation gamma i square square root correct yes sir so this means uh, oh sorry this is equal to this is equal to this. This implies mod f is greater than or equal to summation gamma gamma i square, but gamma i square is nothing but norm of f e1 f e n two norm. And here it was less than or equal to correct and 
here it is greater than equal to this implies norm of f equal to uh, norm of f of e1 f of en2 correct yes sir ha so ek cheez humne dekhi ki norm jo bhi tha wo two norm aa raha hai this is nothing but two norm okay now we define t from rn dash or rn star both are same to rn defining by t of f take f of e1 f of en so it's easy to see that t is linear bisector bisector and what is norm of tf norm of tf is norm of uh, norm of n correct and this is true for all f in r n star so this means this t says r n star and r n uh. both are isomorphic and this part says these are isometric So R N and R N star these are isometrically isomorphic. Suppose R N star and R N are isomorphic. Isomorphic. So I'll stop here. Uh, I'll end this meeting. And let me see whether. It is recorded or not? Okay. Bye then. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, sir.